Hello and welcome to The Shooting Show. I'm Mark Ripley and tonight, just for a change, I'm going to be out foxing using a new Ricoh thermal imaging rifle scope from Infrared and supplied by Scott Country International. So this evening I'm going to be doing uh, a little small holding. Now um, this small holding actually belongs to a friend of mine. It's not a very big bit of ground, it's probably only about 10-15 acres. But he's due to lamb in about 3 or 4 weeks time. So each year I come up and just have a little clear up before he starts lambing. So I'll probably visit another couple, of, couple more times before he actually starts lambing. But this is the first time I've been here for about a year. So I'm hoping there's going to be something about. There's a few houses in that dotted around the area, so I have to be a little bit careful with um, safe angles for shooting and that. And uh, also it's quite flat, so there's only a, a few areas really that I can get to and hopefully put the cooler out and pull something in uh, to a safe area for me to get a shot. So I'll be using the uh, Ricoh thermal scope tonight as well. Now I've had a little look through that scope and that is proper sharp, so uh, I'm really quite excited about having to play with that. So let's get out and have a look. Okay, so I've set myself up behind some fallen tree here. Um, it just gives me a little bit of cover and uh, behind me there's some tall trees as well which is going to hide my silhouette. Now, from experience, I know that putting the cooler out just in front of me here tends to pull them in out of this, uh, there's like a little ditch and a stream um, running through just in front of me. Uh, but it tends to pull them out either out that ditch or from the field behind. So um, it's usually quite a good spot here and also because the field rises up behind uh, in the next field the back of the ground lot rises up so it gives me a good safe backstop as well uh, plus there's quite a few quite big trees all along here as well so uh, again that's another sort of backstop as well for stuff but um, yeah as I say it's usually quite a good spot so I'm going to stick the cooler out and um, see if I can pull something in. Okay, so as usual, I'm using the Fox Pro cooler. I like these little coolers. This one's the Wildfire. It's a nice, small, compact cooler. So I'm chucking in the bag or in the pocket and that, and it's not too bulky. Um, but it, it works, it pulls them in. So uh, I'm going to use um, a cooler that I normally use, um, which is Screaming Rabbit. Now, I tend to have a lot of luck with this one. I find it's quite a loud call. And if you've got any background noise, like there's a road and that down the bottom there, I don't expect the camera to pick it up, but we're getting a bit of traffic noise from down there. So um, something like that will just carry better and uh, hopefully pull something in from um, a bit further afield. So I'm going to give that a blast to begin with.
start I had a fox come through I saw it through the trees um, just in the field behind and I saw it coming up to the trees so uh, it was just having a little nose around in the corner of that next field I gave it another little um, squeak on the caller and there was a couple of rabbits in the field on this side and I saw them scamper out away from the trees so I knew the fox was coming through and sure enough a couple of seconds later it came through the trees and it was just stood down by one of the trees there um, I didn't have any problems at all picking that out even though the, the heat source of the tree was still quite bright I could still see that fox clear as anything that stood in front of it uh, it's about uh, I think it was about 90 yards so just got straight on it bang dropped it lovely no problem straight down That fox just turned up. I didn't uh, didn't call it or anything. I was literally just um, I was actually filming a few rabbits and that with the uh, camcorder, and um, then uh, I just had a quick look at the thermal, and there was a fox out there about 70 or 80 yards out in front of me. So um, I quickly I actually got the camera onto it a little bit because where it was to begin with, it wasn't a safe shot. So I couldn't have shot over that direction. So I thought, well, I might as well get a bit of footage of it. So I managed to film it a little bit, and then it came down the field, down towards the trees. And um, I managed to get it to come down so it was pretty much level with me. So I had a safe shot down the field and I managed to squeak it in a little bit closer and it came into about 75, 80 yards, I suppose, about 75 yards. And um, yeah, just bowled straight over, no problems again. Easy, this thermal stuff is just, it's a game changer. And for, for pest control purposes, it's just unbeatable. Very, very good. Right, so I've tried a few different calls. Um, I haven't managed to anything else in. So I think what I'll do is I'll um, go and pick up these couple of foxes, go and check out the carnage. Um, and then he's got another bit of ground just over the other side of the road there, a couple of little fields. So I think what I'll do is I'll hop over the other side of the road and put the call around and have a little go over there as well. Right. Dog fox. Excellent. It's a good fox that. You see that's the round winning just there. Bang on. That's a really dark fox. Dog fox. Looks like he's seen some uh, seen some action. Looks like he's uh, quite old. Very dark. I don't think I've shot one as dark as that before. There's a big fox. Excellent. Right. Go have a look on the other side of the road. Let's get run over first.
Well, so I've seen quite a few foxes on this side of the farm as well. Um, I was having a little squeak and uh, well actually I'll put the, uh, the cooler out first with pheasant distress call going and I managed to call the fox in from my right here and he came through the hedge, he came straight into the call but he must have winded me. Um, I was trying to let him come right in close and uh, just before I got the chance to take a shot he sort of just sniffed the air and then he was gone. So I missed out on that one. But uh, a little bit later, maybe even been the same one, but one come through this field here and uh, I just let it come through, just watching it in the scope and it came through, started coming down towards me, chasing after the rabbits and that, it got to within 55 yards and um, I just bulged it over the head shop. Then I spotted another one right out over the other side here. Uh, he was just down on the bank looking at me, but he was a little bit far for me to want to take a shot at. So um, I was giving him a little little mouse squeaks now, trying to like, entice him over this way. And uh, he wasn't having any of it. And I just happened to look round to my right with the thermal. And there was a, another fox had come in, probably to my squeaking, and he was sniffing the dead one. And I managed to pick the tripod up, just turn it round and shoot that one as well. So, and with that, the one over the back there just disappeared off up through the trees. But I'm happy with that, it's four foxes, so I'm going to give it a little bit longer because um, there's still one or two about, so we might get lucky, but if not, I'm well pleased with four, and uh, that scope is just awesome. Really, really impressed with it. Right, so I'm going to call it a night. Um, I had a great evening tonight though and uh, managed to thin out a few foxes on this small holding so hopefully come and lamb in he's not going to have too many problems. I'll probably pop back up again uh, for another quick um, look round before he starts lambing anyway. But uh, yeah, and as for the scope, very very good and I believe, let's have a quick look only just gone into the first bar on the battery so that would easily last all night brilliant stuff right home to bed So that was the Rico in action. I hope you enjoyed the footage. Please like and subscribe and until next week, stay safe and shoot straight.